One thing about sailing around the world you learn is patience. And you realize that the only place in the entire world is right here. And the only time is right now. This is a bucket list race. These are the greatest lakes of the world. This is really an ocean in the middle of the continent. I mean, just doing something that is so steeped in tradition and is so filled with personal adventure and challenge. I, I don't think you could celebrate life much more than you can when you're doing the race to Mackinac. My favorite thing uh, with sailing is, the, is uh, once you get out in the ocean, um, there's no, no cell phones, um, you know, they don't have the hustle and bustle of normal day-to-day -day life, and it's, it's very much like the way it was hundreds of years ago. Once you get out there, it's you and the team and the boat and the elements, and I think uh, sailing is one of the few sports that has that. And with Champagne, you know, it fits into the arrival of getting somewhere, the, the celebration. And any day you can be on the water is a celebration, so, you know, Bob Clicquot is just the perfect complement to that lifestyle. Well, it was 1898 was the first race. Club members who were vacationing to Mackinac Island decided it would be fun instead of just cruising up the lake to actually race up there. Whereas a couple year lapse and then they decided to do it again and it gained in popularity and they decided to do it again and it's grown from, you know, five yachts of vacationing to, you know, the world-class sporting event that it is today. The tradition of it is something that is very meaningful and gets passed down, I, th I think, in these families. It's, it's something that families carry on with pride that they want to continue doing. Three, there's three owners, I'm one of them. It's myself and Gary Powell and Scott Rulander. And the three of us have sailed with each other for probably uh, going on 15 years. Then. Like my son Greg, he's, this was his 16th Mac with me, which is kind of fun. So he's a great sailor as well. Great so, team, everybody gets, gets along well with each other. There's good chemistry with each other. Here's our fine yacht mojo. Um, this is where we live, sleep, laugh, and work hard to win races. Crew on a boat is, is really like a family, and uh, that's why picking up new crew is so tough to do and integrating them, because uh, you know you can't just pick somebody up. Uh, it's, it's too personal of a, of a, a, a thing on the boat. On the sails, who's on the man over, who's on the GPS? Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Every boat in the race is like its own community, and every skipper and sailor in that community on the boat has ten family members watching them during the race. It's just great to impact all of these people and be part of something that is so vast when you when you really think about it. It's hard to describe what it's like to be a part of that when you know that so many sailors have gone before you including a number of women. The, the spirit of, of, of Clico is clearly one of um, quality and tradition. Madame Clicquot was a young widow who built a champagne empire in the 1800s. And it wasn't without challenges, and it was just her audacity and determination, I think, that really, really pulled the brand through. And she just didn't take no for an answer. She was willing to take risks. To win a sailboat race, you have to be willing to take a few risks, too. I didn't know how to sail, but I had a conversation with myself along the lines of, you've always liked being around the water. And look at this resource that's right at your doorstep. All of the yacht clubs have casual races on Wednesday nights. And racers are always looking for crew and teach people how to sail all the time. Just start showing up. So that's what I did. I started showing up at the, at the various yacht clubs around town with gym shoes and a six pack. And I never got left behind. And that's how I learned how to sail. It takes someone who is willing to be their own person know their own strength, know when they need to ask for assistance. You know, I suppose there's a lot of, of that in what the widow did in making her company and building her company. So many of the aspects of Champagne fit so well with the celebratory nature of getting to the island. Everything's a celebration. There's always a reason to celebrate. Going out, coming back, uh, successfully completing a voyage, and what better way to celebrate anything. I think it's, it's almost a universal tradition that when one celebrates, one celebrates to champagne. The anchor has always been the emblem of the House of Clicquot. 
and it's also the traditional symbol of hope, steadfastness, and patience. And I think it's really three characteristics shared by our house and everyone who sailed to Mackinac. Ladies and gentlemen, we've waited an entire year for this moment. The start of the MAC race is less than 48 hours away. We have 360 boats from around the Great Lakes, from both coasts, and from as far away as Hong Kong joining us here today. It's a 12-month event. It, we really, we start working um, as the MAC committee starts working a, a year in advance. The race committee starts planning about eight months in advance. Everybody's checking all their equipment. Everybody's making sure that everything's ready to go and preparing all the food. There's such a buzz about it. There's such an air of excitement. And that does give a joy in life. I think it's adventure, the desire for adventure. One of the Pooh said, sometimes the anticipation of the honey is almost as good as the honey itself. And it's that, it's that anticipation. I think that's, that's what drives me more than anything else. When I started, they always told me it was hours of boredom punctuated by moments of panic. It's challenging, it's dangerous at times, it's exciting, it's boring. Uh, my mother said racing sailboats was like standing in an ice cold shower tearing up hundred dollar bills. This is very Chinese philosophical in the sense, you know, you can always laugh at a mountain, but you can never laugh at a sea. Because, you know, when it comes up, when it turns on its ugly side, you know, it'll be very scary. But as long as the mountain is concerned, you just stay away and don't climb it. kind of in a cookie cutter world and, and to come to a place that's this unique and be a part of that history. 82% of this island is state park and it'll never be developed. So you have both this beautiful Victorian downtown that time forgot, Victorian cottages here that date back well over 100 years, and then 1,800 acres of just wilderness of about 60 miles of trails to walk and bike. I have a place, there is no flow. There is no door. It's a freshwater feeling, swimming and reeling, living inside and outside of me. Here's to the voyage, here's to the arrival, here's to the painstaking stride of survival, here's to camaraderie we all maintain. To the last mile and first taste of champagne. Where we're sitting right now was the social center of the hotel. To see, to be seen, to take the healing breezes was the porch. That's what it was all about. Pomp, circumstances, tea dances. They even held tennis matches out on this porch. Everything was an event. Everything was bigger than life. Everything was a celebration to make people feel special. Years ago, it was started by all the, at that time, wives of sailors, and they would all get together on Sunday nights. Cheers to Buffalo. Cheers to Buffalo. Cheers. Happy summer. Thank you. Cheers. You guys should come in early tonight. It's blowing. Pink Pony is the closest bar to uh, the, the marina, and that's where most of the sailors stop to get their first drink after, after finishing a 333-mile trip. We opened the Pink Pony back in uh, 1944, and ever since, it's uh, with our location, it's kind of been the hangout of all the sailors. They like to try to take the Pink Pony and uh, be as creative with it as possible. And, uh, we found it in, out in the buoy in the Straits of Mackinac. That's kind of one of the most unique spots. Uh, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Hey, 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 hey
Island and Chairman of our Race Committee. Thanks to the Race Committee. Please give a big shout out to the Race Committee. The etched bottles above Clicquot to all of our section, division, and first to finish winners. The line honors vote for Mono Hall's first to finish and also first place in the turbo section. Bo Jest, Carl Quack, Royal Hong Kong Yacht Club. Give her the buff with go after taking it on victory. Cheers. 100! 100! 100! We all have little things to celebrate every time we come down here. Um, we're spending time with our friends in a wonderful setting, and it's a perfect place for champagne. Because it is such a great group of people, and it's such a great race, and a historical race. If I think back to what the boats were like when this race started, what the world was like, that the race took time off for the two world wars, um, you know, all of that gives sort of this sense of, of it being such almost a monument, if you will. And it's really quite an incredible thing to be a part of that tradition. I didn't even know that sailboat racing was a sport uh, when I was a little girl. So, did I ever think I'd be doing something like this? Um, no, not really. I'm just uh, so pleased that uh, I found my way to sailboat racing because it's just added enormously to my life. Maybe ask this lady here. A lady, come on over here. Do you know anything about champagne? If I say it correctly, if I say Bob Clicquot, nobody knows what I'm talking about. So I have to say move, and then I feel like I'm you know, feeding like this negative cycle. Like, people are never going to know what it, how to really say it. A verb quite cool. Oh, gosh. Boca Coes? Great times for all. Right